All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this 13.3 inch MacBook Air model A2179. There's the model number right there in tiny text. All right, we're going to be using a P5 or Pentalobe 1.2 screwdriver to remove the screws from the bottom. So let's go ahead and remove those. All right, if this video helps you out, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their device as well. You want to keep the screws in order. Um, the way I do that, I put them flat side down like that on my desk in the pattern I remove them. So we have four here, one on either side, and then four more here. All right. Also, if this video helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right. If you can't help out that way, it would help a lot if you could watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well because that's what the algorithm likes to see. And yeah, other than that, uh, let's go ahead and continue removing all these screws. Okay, so on this model, um, the whole cover has like screws all the way around, so it doesn't have any clips. Some of the other MacBook Pros, they started doing where they hide clips underneath, and then um, if you don't know what to do, you gotta slide the cover out. Um, and if you don't, you end up bending this whole bottom cover and damaging it. So you wanna be very careful. Okay, but on this model specifically, um, it's more like the older models where you can actually just pop the whole bottom cover off. Okay, so now that we got all those screws out, also the back screws, they're different. The ones towards the center have like a longer, like smooth surface, and the ones towards, um, wait, did I mix it up? <laughs> Sorry. The ones towards the outside corners here have the longer smooth surface, and then the ones towards the middle have the shorter. So let me see if I can show you the difference there. There you go. So the outer one has more smooth surface and less thread, and then the middle one has a shorter smooth surface and more thread. Okay, so there we go. Let's go ahead now and pop the bottom cover off. So the way I do that is I just go in the back air vent here. I use my fingernails and then I just go and pull up. I can push down with my thumb over here on the screen and there we go, pops out just like that. So the customer spilled liquid in here <coughs> And because of that, the keyboard's not working and the touchpad's kind of having some issues. So um, we do need to replace some components here. Oh no, it looks like, okay, let me see. The replacement we have, does it have? Okay, the replacement we have has all these cables and stuff. It looks like they tried to work on it and then they ripped that. But good thing the replacement we got comes with the cable, okay? All right, so first thing we're gonna do, we need to make sure this is completely off. So there's actually a little button here. Let me zoom in here to show you that. Okay, sometimes the light, there will be a light here that's on to tell you that there's power, but if there isn't, you're basically gonna have to press and hold this for about 15 seconds, all right? So I press on that. You can actually feel it physically click in. So we're gonna hold that for about 15 seconds, all right? Some people ask if they have to do this kind of thing. Um, it's only 15 seconds and it's likely to save you from destroying your whole computer. So just take that little bit of time and yeah, hold the button down. All right. <clears throat> so we'll hold it actually a little bit longer just to be safe. Okay. And then we'll let go. And there we go. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to pull the battery connector out. Okay. So what you do, um, peel this little adhesive up and then we're going to there's a raised tab. I use my fingernail there. You can use a pry tool or whatever works. And I just kind of go from side to side and pull on it. And there we go. Pops out just like that. All right. And then I like to just be extra safe and press and hold that button again. The thing I'm a little worried is this button feels a little like weird mushy. It's not as clicky as usual. Um, but yeah, hopefully it'll be okay. <clears throat> so in this case, we're actually going to be replacing... Um, the whole entire keyboard assembly. So that's the touchpad, trackpad, keyboard, um, the speakers, and even the fan we have attached, so we don't need to take that out. But anyways, let me zoom out, and then let's start removing components. So first thing we're gonna do is actually remove the screen. So I actually have a separate video on how to remove the screen, so if you wanna see that, um, just let me know, and then you can watch that video. Um, <clears throat> okay, so to remove this, we're going to be using a T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver. So let's go ahead and grab that. And we're going to remove the screws across the top. There's two holding this silver side. There's two in the middle black ones here and then two silver ones here. So we're going to remove those screws. <clears throat> okay. All right. And hopefully nothing on the motherboard end is damaged <clears throat> because, or logic board, 
uh, because if that's the case, then replacing this isn't going to fix the problem completely. Uh, sometimes it can short here and then it can cause damage up here as well, so hopefully not. Alright, so we've got that screw. There's another black one right here. Okay, and then we got two more silver ones here. This one here. <clears throat> all right now that we got all those screws out we do need to disconnect this uh the wireless antennas here let me zoom in a bit here okay so it's a lot of screws um keep that in mind hopefully you can keep track of all of them again i do that by keeping them all in the pattern that i remove them this is a t3 torch 3 screw so we're going to remove that as well <clears throat> then you have this little metal plate we're going to pull that up okay and also um, so you don't put it upside down. The plate has this little part that extends down, so it goes that way, okay? Make sure you don't put it upside down or flip it over backwards, okay? You want to make sure that this metal part that sticks out goes towards the back here. Okay, so we'll set that aside. <clears throat> We're going to pull the antenna wires up. So I just go underneath the wire towards the end of the tail, and I just pull straight up, just like that. This side as well, just pull straight up, just like that. Okay. We also need to disconnect the LCD LVDS connector here, again using the T3 or Torx 3. <clears throat> sometimes you want to check because sometimes the screwdriver sets are different. So you might want to test with um, your T4 or T5 and see whatever fits the best. You don't want the screwdriver to slip. All right. Anyways, we're going to pull this out. So same thing, it has this don't try and flip it upside down or anything and then screw it in. Okay, we got the um, LCD LVDS connector here so you just pop that out if you're doing this it's very important that you did that battery drain normally I would open the laptop and press and hold the power button for 15 seconds but in this case the power button is dead because the keyboard is dead um, and all of this is broken so <clears throat> we just had to do it that way actually the power button might actually well we'll do it the thing actually popped out when I pulled that metal tab off um, but in this case, actually, I forgot the power button is attached to this, and then it connects to the motherboard here. So actually, the power button is separate from the keyboard on this model. Okay. All right. So now what we're going to do, <coughs> let's see. what. Okay, we do need to transfer this little board over. So to remove this board, um, we're going to still be using the, we're going to use a T5 and a T3. So <coughs> the two silver screws here uh, on the side, all right. We're going to remove using the T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver. Okay, so let's go ahead and remove those. Got that one and this one. Okay, so we got those two out. After you get those two out, we're going to remove all of these using a T3 or Torx 3 screwdriver. Okay, so remove that. This one. I might have to respond to some messages soon, so I might have to stop the video for a bit. Uh, let's go ahead and get this out. <clears throat> okay, then we can remove this metal plate cover. Then you got one black screw over here holding this board still in place. So we'll get that out as well. Okay, we have this connector here, which is a pop-up connector. So I just get underneath with my fingernail, make sure to hold this down. You can also pop it out without, without removing these other screws. Uh, but yeah, we'll pop this up. We're going to carefully pull this up. You want to try and keep this cable as flat as possible while you're peeling it up, okay? I'm going to hold my finger here so it doesn't like suddenly fling out when it reaches the end of the adhesive, but there we go. This connector comes out by flipping this black latch, okay? There's a plastic latch here that you need to flip up. Once it's vertical, then you can go ahead and kind of wiggle and pull this connector out just like that. And these connectors seem okay. So we'll set that aside, okay? Um, <clears throat> so I'm kind of like doing all of the parts at once. Normally I would have just removed the whole screen first, but anyways, let's go ahead and remove this little connector. So we have this, this is for the, uh, power button touch ID. You want to be very careful, very gentle with that, because if you damage and destroy that, your fingerprint reader is not going to work anymore. Even if you replace the power button, um, the power button, the fingerprint reader is linked to the logic board. All right. So I get underneath here and I kind of just use a tool like this to kind of wiggle this. You can also add like a tiny bit of isopropyl alcohol to make it um, so it doesn't stick. But yeah, I just get under there and kind of just wiggle that. Okay, and there we go, it's disconnected. 
Also, you have the fan connector here, which can be a little bit tricky to remove. If you have a small, thin tool here, you can get underneath <clears throat> this piece, okay? And then while you're kind of lifting this area up, actually, it's easier for me to do this with my screwdriver. So I get this under the speaker here. And then while I'm kind of pulling this up, I push down on this side, okay? And let's see if we can get it. It's a little bit tricky here. Uh, that's not, okay, let's try from this side. Sometimes it comes up easier than others. This time it's being a little tricky. Let's go back to this tool. Okay, so we'll get under there. And then you basically want to pry one side up first. So I'm going to hold, push this down while I'm pulling up. And you can see it popped up. And there we go. Hopefully that was clear enough. I know the focus is like getting messed up. But anyways, we're going to pull this wire up out of the way. And then we got this audio board with the fingerprint thing and everything. We're going to pull that out. If your speaker, this is the uh, right side speaker. It's on the left because it's upside down right now. But if that's messed up or not working at all, it might be this thing. So you might want to check that. And the headphone jacks here. Right, then you have the um, <coughs> this connector that puts it into the logic board. And then the smaller connector that's for the um, fingerprint reader, power button, and everything. We do need to transfer that over to the new case. Otherwise, again, if you try and use an old, I mean a different one, you're not going to get Touch ID. Okay, let's go ahead and pull the wireless antennas out. Uh, so the wireless antennas bar is this whole silver thing all the way to the center. And it's a little bit tricky. Usually what I do is I pull up from here a little bit which allows me to get a gap here. You can use like pry tools and stuff. Obviously I'm just using my fingernails because for me it's easier and it's like, I always have this tool here, <laughs> All right? So we're gonna go there, then I grab this and then I pull up. You wanna kind of work more towards the center here because there are some clips that hold it down there. Um, you do wanna also pull this up and move that out of the way somewhat. Um, all right, and then you can kind of grab over here and help pull that up. So I'm pulling this up, you can see. All right, and once you pull that up, you can see we can kind of get the whole thing out. Make sure this cable is pulled back because you don't want it to get caught on this and then rip that out. Okay, so hold that, pull that, and there we go. Here's the wireless antenna bar. We'll set that aside. And now we can go ahead and take the screen out. Um, to take the screen out, uh, basically what you want to do is open the screen all the way like completely as far as it goes i hang the edge of the screen off my desk uh let's see you're probably gonna see a bunch of junk all over my desk as i zoom out but let's go here okay so now we have this we're going to use a t8 or torx 8 screwdriver um, bit to remove these screws okay <clears throat> you can also use the security version of it but yeah i just use the t8 or torx 8 and we're going to remove the six screws here okay so there's three on either side Okay, and these screws can be pretty tough to remove. They do use some thread locker there. All right, so we're gonna get these three screws out and then do the other three. Just like this. Okay, this is being a little tough, these screws. There we go. All right. Jeez, these ones are super tough. one here all right so now that we got those six screws out we're gonna carefully you can let the screen drop to about 90 degrees usually I would just pull it further over the edge of my desk and then you can kind of wiggle and lift this so you might have to wiggle it back and forth to find where it like can pop out from the case and then just pull it up okay so let me do that real quick and there we go, so here's the screen. This screen is working, so we need to set it aside so we can put it back later, okay? All right, so next, let's see. The part we have, it comes with the battery, comes with the keyboard, touchpad assembly. Um, it has this little cable here, which if I remember correctly is for the microphones. All right, oh, why is there a bubble here? Let's try and push that flat back out. Okay, 
Um, two speakers, all right, what else? Uh, they have the post for the charge port, so we're gonna have to move the charge ports over, um, and the fan, okay. So, let's go ahead and continue removing components. The fan's already there. We're gonna have to migrate over the power button here. Um, and if you're wondering, uh, you don't have to remove everything in the same exact order I'm doing. The main thing is disconnecting the battery first, and then um, if you're if you can kind of tell what's going on, then you can remove them in a different order. But if you don't know what you're doing, then you probably just want to follow along. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and see now. I believe these were T3 or Torx 3 screws that hold the power button fingerprint reader in place. So we'll remove these six screws. Oops, let me zoom in here. Okay, so there's a lot of screws holding this fingerprint uh, reader button in place. Make sure again to keep the screws in order. I'm sorry. That, okay. Two, three. All right, and then we'll get these three out. And you want to be careful when the um, touch ID power button falls out. If I remember correctly, I don't know if on this model, but other models, they have little washers or plates that you kind of want to keep in order. Oh, this metal plate is actually coming out. So here you can see, All right? And you want to be careful because you don't want this metal plate to cut into that wire. So this is what it looks like. And I don't know if there's really a right side up or upside down. Let me see that one's going to that side. Okay, there's not really a right side up, upside down, it seems. Actually, yeah, there is. Okay, so when I hold it the right side up, the left side goes up that way, and then the right side is going diagonal down that way to this big circle piece. Okay, if you put it upside down, then it goes the opposite way. It's going like down. So make sure you get this back in the right way as well. We'll set that aside. Okay, then we're going to uh, lift this up. Since we have the screen off, the power button is just here, and we're going to kind of just guide this wire through the hole. It goes in through the front. Be careful not to get it snagged on anything. Go very slow and gentle. And here is the actual physical power button, touch ID thingy here. Okay, um, there's also a model number here. It's super tiny, um, but yeah, it's not gonna focus, is it? Okay, but it's 02630-01 uh, if you wanna know. All right, we're gonna set that aside. All right, and underneath here, there's no washers or anything, so we don't need to worry about that. Okay, so we got all of that. The fan, um, we're not gonna transfer because we have it already with the other one. So let's go ahead and continue removing the last few pieces. Um, we have the logic board, motherboard here, whatever you wanna call it, it's technically a logic board, okay. And we're going to be removing these screws. I believe we're going to be using the T5. Usually it's best to try with the larger screwdriver first and then move over to the smaller one. Sorry, I went out of view. So the T5 here, I'm going to remove this screw. And this screw. Okay, again, make sure you put them back where you got them. There's a lot of screws. All right, we're going to peel this uh, little tab up here. Peel that back. Uh, you want to make sure you peel it until it's no longer touching this connector here. Then we're going to flip this black plastic latch up vertical like that. And then we can go ahead and pull the fan connector out. Um, this can be a, a little tricky as well. So I'm going to get under here with this tool and kind of just wiggle this to try and slowly peel up the connector here. Okay. Um, again, you can also add a little drop of isopropyl alcohol to make it slide through. Uh, but I don't really like doing that because then it makes a goopy mess. Okay, so we'll pull that up. Yeah, unless I have to, I try and avoid doing that. Okay, so there we go. We got that out. Let me double check theirs. Okay, so there's this one. Replacement one looks okay. Okay, so we got those two screws. We got another screw here. Okay, again, these are T5 or Torx 5 screws. So we got that one out as well. Oops, I need to slide it over. Okay, we'll get out this bigger one as well. 
Then we have this uh, connector. Oh, we need the T3 or Torx 3. So we can disconnect the touchpad, trackpad. All right, if you want a video on how to replace the touchpad trackpad, I'm pretty sure I have a video of that as well. Um, so if you need that, just let me know. Hopefully, um, this specific model is a little bit of a pain because of the way they designed it. Um, they technically designed it to where you have to um, pull the whole cable out first and then attach it. Actually, this one's not too bad, but they designed it to where you have to pull the whole cable out and then attach it to the touchpad first, all right? And then after that, you can thread the touchpad cable through this hole, like this whole piece, and then you can plug in these two, this part and the part up here. But anyways, we remove the two screws. We're gonna remove this metal plate, set that aside. Then we're gonna pop this connector up just like that, okay? Then we have this screw here. Oh, sorry, make sure to switch back to the T5, Torx 5. Kind of annoying how Apple does that, where I have to keep switching back and forth. I don't know why they did that, just to make things difficult, I guess. All right, we'll get those two out. We also have these. I believe these are also T3. Yep, so we're going to have to switch back to the T3, Torx 3. <clears throat> okay, get that one and this one. All right, then we're going to remove this. Just pop that metal plate out as well. Sometimes this oops, sometimes this metal plate actually doesn't even separate and then you have to pop the whole thing. Oh, I might have to rewatch my video because as you can see, the one hole is smaller and one hole is like wider. So I like to make sure to put them back the same way I found it. So let me rewatch my video real quick and make sure which sides which, hopefully I can tell. And then I'll show you guys. All right, I'll be back. All right, so I'm back and yeah. There's not really, I don't think it really matters which way you put it, but the smaller hole was at the top edge towards the back where the hinges go. And then the like elongated hole is towards the bottom. Okay, so we'll set that aside. We'll pop this connector up just like that. Oops, sorry, I'm going out of view. Let me actually blow some of the dust out here. Oops, I need to take this tape off my... Okay, so go next thing we're going to do we're going to take out this little charge port connector so this you don't have to i believe on this model you don't have to take everything out to get this charge port out so this is using a t5 or torx 5 screw if you want to replace the charge port you just need to remove this thing and then the two screws here okay so we'll get these two screws out pretty sure that's the case here. So we got those two screws out. Then we can go ahead and lift this and is it caught underneath? No, okay. So you kind of have to wiggle it a little and maybe the, actually maybe the motherboard is in the way. <laughs> but you can see we can kind of pull this back some. Yeah, I think the motherboard might be in the way. So we're gonna try and lift from here and nope. Okay, I guess we do have to re remove the logic board. If you're willing to like risk it, you can try and just yank it out, but uh, I don't want to mess it up. So we're going to leave that there for now. Let's go ahead and take out these connectors. So we got the speaker connector here, and then I believe, again, that's the microphone. So we're going to go ahead and peel this, okay, again, away from the connector. Flip that latch up, and then we're going to pull this back. And there we go. We got that cable out. Now we're going to pop that out helps you use like a small thin tool you can use that or you can use this flat end and then I just like twist here so you can see it popped out that one side and then once you get that side out I get my fingernail under there you can use like a pry tool or whatever and then go across and pull that out then it has some adhesive so we're gonna peel this off make sure you're not pulling the whole logic board up and out there we go and yeah Okay, so next thing we're going to do, we're going to pull the logic board out, and then we need to transfer everything back over and put it back together. So here we go. We're going to get this. We're going to lift this carefully up, grab the sides here, make sure none of the cables are getting caught on it. That's very important. Okay, we're going to slowly, carefully lift this. Is something holding it down. Carefully wiggle and pull. Feels like I might have missed something or something is holding it down. That's really strange. We're just going to wiggle slightly and see what is. Okay. And now it's coming out. So there we go. 
and oh is that from the spill okay i was wondering because that's not normal you see that goopy stuff in there i believe that's from the liquid spill and oh that doesn't look good either so it looks like they got some damage here we're gonna brush this stuff um, usually you can clean this off with some warm water and then dry it up with isopropyl alcohol. I'd use warm water, brush it, dry it really well with an air blower, and then we'll clean that up. But I believe this is for the most part done. We're going to pull this piece out. Okay, so we'll get that. These are the charge ports. And the charge ports look okay. There's some dirt and stuff on it, but for the most part they seem okay. Okay, I'm trying to just scrape off some of that gunk. It's like at the edges, it has some gross gunk there. Okay, so there's the charge ports. I'll set that aside. All right, now we're pretty much done with this, so I'll set that aside. And then we'll have to go ahead and get the new stuff. So let me set that down. Okay, so I'm gonna clean this up now because it's kind of gross there. All right, let's see if we can brush the green stuff off. Um, usually I just use a toothbrush here and then we can try and brush this white and green stuff off. Usually the green is like um, oxidized copper. I don't know, it could be something else, but it's usually from, it's uh, like oxidization, rusting kind of stuff. All right, and this stuff is gonna be a little tricky. Um, I mean, you guys aren't gonna have the same exact spill, so everybody's just gonna be different. I'm just gonna use a, small piece of paper towel, fold it up a little. I have a little bottle of water. This is actually distilled water, but um, I mean water, tap water will be fine as long as it doesn't have like metals that are gonna short something or salt or something in it. You want pure clean water or clean water. Okay, so you can see we can wipe that stuff off. Didn't have an issue. So it's better to do this than to dunk the entire board. Um, but usually if you did the proper power drains and stuff, you're not going to have an issue even if the whole board got water on it, as long as you dry it completely before you try and turn it back on. Okay, so we'll clean that, whatever that goopy gunk was, off. Alright, I'm going to put a little drop of water on that area where it had the thing. Okay, so we got a drop of water there, and I'm just going to scrub that and clean it up. Okay, and then we're gonna dry that. Try and dry it best you can. Hopefully it didn't cause any permanent damage yet, but a lot of times it's like kind of iffy. So I'm gonna use this to kind of blow excess water away. Um, I also have an electric air blower that I use sometimes, but that's for if the whole board is having some problems since it's just a small area. We're just gonna do that. Okay. So now that we've done that, um, I'm going to use a little dropper thing that I have with some isopropyl alcohol, and we're going to just put it in the same area here. And this helps um, kind of dilute and evaporate the water. So we're going to kind of brush that around. Okay. All right, and now let's go ahead and dry this up. that we didn't get water in there. Oh, they have some corrosion on this side of the board as well. You can see that green stuff. So we're gonna clean that as well. Hopefully that will fix the issue they were having because they were also having issues where when it started up, it was super slow. Okay, we're gonna get this. Get some more isopropyl alcohol on this as well. Brush that. Okay, and then we're gonna have to dry that up. All right, we'll set that aside and let's dry this up as well. There we 
go. So now let's take a close look and you can see, right, all that corrosion stuff is gone. Okay, it does have this that looks a little liquidy. Can I clean that off? Let's try with a little um, water. Depending what's spilled, some stuff is dissolvable by water and some stuff is dissolvable by the isopropyl alcohol. Um, isopropyl alcohol has a little water in it, but sometimes it's not enough. So I'm going to have to try and use both. Okay, so that's obviously not really coming out with that. So let's go ahead and get some isopropyl alcohol on the other side and see if we can wipe it off with that. see if we can wipe that stuff off. Oh, that's actually the sticker residue from the speaker thing. And this side. Yeah, whatever's in there doesn't really want to clean off well, so might have to just leave it. All right, we're gonna slow down a little bit again. Okay, so you saw this side. And this side. Okay, so all that green stuff that was like down here for the most part is gone. Um, that was here. Actually, there's a little speck there. I'm going to have to see if I can get that out. It's not giving a clear view. Okay. And that doesn't seem to want to come out. So it might just be part of the board now. <laughs> all right. this up a little more this stuff has like a little weird rainbow effect going on I'm gonna see if I can clean that off okay that doesn't seem to want to come off come off so we'll just make sure it's dry and then we'll reassemble okay let's go ahead and put this together with the new part okay so first things first the charge port connectors so oh, it actually came with, oops, sorry, actually came with two screws here. So let's go ahead and remove those. And I'm going to actually put these screws in the old one so I don't accidentally mix it up. Let me grab that. Okay. Just going to put that in the old one. And that way I have those if for some reason I need it. I can save this part for later. I believe the speakers on this old one are okay, so if for some reason I need the speakers. But uh, on this model, I haven't really been seeing the speakers fail, so they should be okay. All right, set that aside. Okay, let's go ahead and get the new charge ports in, or sorry, the old charge ports in, the new part. So I'll get that. And usually what I like to do is I like to loosely fit the screws first, so we'll get this one. And this one, okay. Also, it's very important to keep yourself grounded when working on this stuff. <laughs> if you didn't already know that, hopefully you didn't destroy your computer. Okay, so we'll tighten this in and tighten this one in. If you want, you can test the charge port now. Um, make sure it plugs in okay. Okay, and it holds good, okay. Yep. Okay, so that should be good. All right, next thing we're going to do, <clears throat> there's no exact specific order. If you want, we can now put in the fingerprint reader and stuff back first. Okay, and apparently I didn't need to take all six screws out for the spring. You could have left the middle ones, or I could have left the middle ones in. Um, but the old one has it completely removed here, so I had to transfer it out anyways. Okay, so we're going to now get the button back in. You need to thread it through this hole. Okay, and this can be a little tricky. Hold that in place. If you want, you can use some tape to hold it in place after you thread it through. Um, but yeah, all right. Be careful not to drop this down on the table while it's like crooked. So you don't want to accidentally smash the button while it's sticking up like that. All right, we're going to switch back over to the... T3, Torx 3 screwdriver. Alright, and we're going to get these screws in. 
So again, first we're gonna get the middle ones to hold that metal bracket in place. Okay. Can be a little tricky here. Okay. Once you get these two in, then it should be easier to do. So in. Okay. So once you get those two in, um, again, I just loosely fit them. We're gonna now get the other four. All right, and once you get like the corners, so I'm gonna do two corners uh, diagonal from each other, then we can go ahead and let it lower down. So we'll get this one. Okay, so we'll let that lower down. Now we can go ahead and put the last two screws and then tighten them up. Okay, you can see how much wiggle play there is here. And that's why I don't just tighten them up right away because I kind of want to make sure everything is centered and aligned. And yeah, all right. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to tighten this middle one at the top and then the middle one at the bottom. And you want to actually check because now that locks in, these don't really move around as much. So you want to make sure that this button is somewhat centered in the hole. Um, as you can see, it's kind of off. So we're going to try and center that more. Um, usually it's not important, but I try and get it centered if I can. Okay, you can see this button can kind of wiggle around a lot. So this part is, uh, if you're trying to be a perfectionist, it's going to be a nightmare. <laughs> right? Uh, basically while I'm holding the button in place, I'm now tightening that down. And hopefully it's centered enough. Nope. I don't know if they have a thing, a tool that they can put in there to kind of shim it and keep it. I'm just going to barely loosen it and see if I can wiggle it around. So let's see here. So hopefully I can wiggle it around just enough. Also, I think most people when they get their computer, they don't pay that close attention that they go, hey, it's like a little crooked. But uh, I guess that's one way you can tell if someone had their computer worked on. Right, you can see it's way more centered now. So we're gonna tighten this and hopefully that doesn't cause it to rotate itself just by tightening that screw. That's it, a little bit. Yeah, this is, to get it completely centered, it's gonna be very difficult because it does move around as you tighten the screws. So, hmm. let me try holding the button in and then tightening. Okay, let's see. Yeah, it does also, even after tightening, it wiggles a little. So just get it as close as possible. It does seem a little tiny bit twisted, but I don't know. To get it 100% perfect, it's gonna be a pain. Let me try one more time a little bit. Okay, that's probably about as close as we're going to get it. <clears throat> Let's go ahead now and tighten these four corners. It is wiggling a little even as we tighten these in, so yeah. Let's double check it after we do the, these four. Maybe I'm, oops, sorry. Let me, maybe I'm doing it in the wrong order. I should do the four corner ones and then do the middle ones to align everything. Yeah, let me try that and see if I can. We'll loosen the two top and bottom middle ones and see if we can wiggle this around a little, kind of. Yeah, I wonder if they have a little shim thing that can align it completely centered. But I'm just kind of, I don't know, I want it to be 100% centered and I'm just... Most people, I think, don't care. They'll just tighten it in. Okay, so we'll tighten this now. Okay. All right, and yeah, it seems to still want to move a tiny bit. So I don't know if there's a way to get it 100% in the middle. It keeps spinning, and that actually spun more than the first time. So, we're gonna try and just put it there again. 
Okay, hopefully that's good. I feel like I'm messing up the making the screws get more and more loose. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, so the T4 doesn't work. Definitely T3 only. Okay. So now that we got those all in, I'm gonna double check, make sure they're all tightened again. All right. Then we can go ahead and put this piece back on. Again, there's no specific order for certain parts. All right, so we'll get that in. So we're gonna lift this. You wanna get the headphone to go in and then you can let this drop down. Okay, you can go ahead and click this in. Make sure to get it aligned and then click it down. Click down the headphone, or sorry, the speaker here. All right, then we're gonna switch back over to the um, T5, Torx 5 bit. Okay, let's see. I'm switching stuff around, so it's gonna be, hopefully it won't be too confusing for you guys. All right, so we're gonna put this screw in first. And again, I'm gonna just loosely fit it first because I wanna make sure both screws, everything is aligned properly. And then you can kind of use these two raised posts to help pull this over. And then once you have it in the right place, hold it down and tighten these. That one and this one. Okay, <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and switch back to the T3 or Torx 3 screwdriver. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this one screw, the black one that was up in this corner. Okay. Get that down. All right, then we got the um, logic board, motherboard. Let's zoom out a bit more. All right. So the tricky part with this is you wanna make sure everything all these cables are out of the way, okay? So when you drop it down, it's not uh, smashing any of those wires. So the power, or sorry, the charge ports, the speaker here, and then this microphone, as well as the headphone jack. And then make sure to pull the battery connector here, and then the fan connector here out of the way, okay? So pull those out, then you can let this drop in. Okay, you can see how much wiggle room there is here, so it doesn't really self-align itself. Okay, we're gonna stick or switch back to the T5 or Torx 5, and let's go ahead and get these screws in first. Okay, I'm gonna loosely fit them first. So we got this one over here. Okay, I'm gonna loosely fit it. We got this one up here. We've got the really big fat one here in the center. Okay. Then we got this one here, center top. And then we got the two over here that are somewhat covered by stuff. That one and this one. Okay, you gotta move the connectors out of the way and get that screw in. Okay, now what I like to do is I like to connect all these pieces and then that way they will kind of guide the board to where the center is. Okay, so pull those, you got this connector, make sure we get that. This one's a little bit tricky, I don't know if you can see that. Um, you gotta carefully make sure that latches up, of course, and then carefully slide this in. Okay, slide that into place, then latch that down. You just slide your finger over the top, don't use like tools to flick it, because a lot of people end up breaking those off doing that. All right, we got the touchpad trackpad connector here. Let me get that. Uh, let me actually dust it real quick. Okay. That lined up. Click that in. Perfect. Don't plug in the battery. Don't plug this one in until we're completely reassembled. Okay. Let me get the fan connector here in. Good. And then slide my finger over to latch it down. Okay, you can see 
it's pretty wobbly. Um, let's go ahead and get the screen first before we tighten it in because you can see this can move a lot. Okay, so we're going to zoom out again. All right, so we got the screen. <clears throat> and again, normally I used to do this hanging off the edge of my desk. Um, let me see. I don't know. Let me see if I can show that. Let me pause. I'll be back. All right, I'm back. So we got this position now where you can kind of see. All right, so the hinges are all the way open. We're gonna we're gonna do oops. Um, what we're gonna do now? You can see this thing is super dusty. So actually, let me clean that and I'll be back. All right, so I'm back. Let's go ahead now and get this in. So again, it's hanging over the edge of my desk slightly. We're gonna now hold this up. Slowly, carefully drop this into place. Now we have the hinges over here. We're gonna kind of just wiggle this and kind of get that into place. Right now that we got that, I'm gonna pull this over. So now the screen is kind of resting against the edge of my desk a little bit and it's um, holding it somewhat open. It's also on my legs to help hold it up. And let's go ahead and go back to the T8 or Torx 8 screwdriver. Okay. And what I do is I'll get the most inner, the innermost screw in first, just like this on both sides, just like this. Okay, now that we got both there, we're gonna lay it on the screen and carefully, slowly close this. And now we wanna align this. So the gap here is much wider than the gap on the other side. So what we're gonna do, oops, let's zoom out, is we're gonna loosen this a little bit on both sides. And then I'm gonna kind of use the side, I moved my camera weird now. Anyways, you can push both sides to kind of help line it you can kind of adjust by wiggling it side to side a little okay try and get it as centered as possible and also try and get this the back here to be flush all right you don't want an edge sticking out okay so try and get that as flat as possible and then once you get that you'll tighten it down just like this all right, now that we got those two, we're gonna go ahead and get the other ones, okay? So tighten these all the way. All right. Okay, now we got those three. We're gonna get the other three here. Here. All right, so we got those six screws back. You can rotate this over. Next, we're gonna have to put the wireless antenna. Let me fix my camera again. All right, so now that we've got that, let's go ahead and get the wireless antenna bar back in. So you gotta thread this through. Oh. This is dusty as well, let me clean that. Also, if you're wondering how I clean it, I just use a toothbrush off to the side so it's not going back in the computer. Okay, there's still hair here. Okay, so now we're gonna thread the wireless antennas through, or the, I guess the LCD LVDS cable stuff through. Then we'll rotate it over, get that all lined up. Okay, so now we got all of that. <clears throat> I like to try and push this in first, uh, especially since they have the little latches down here. Okay, so try and push that down first. Usually this portion here doesn't kind of go in all the way. So if you zoom in, if I zoom in here. So this has like little uh, metal divots that stick out and usually this gets like pushed down in there. Okay. Um, it's not really that important to push that back in, but that's how it is from factory, okay? All right, so next thing we're gonna do, get that back in. We'll zoom out a bit again. And now we gotta get the T5 Torx 5 screws back in. Okay, so 
So we have the two silver ones on the outside here. So we'll get that one in. And again, I like to loosely fit them first before I tighten them all the way down. Also, if you notice, I twist it backwards first to feel it, feel it click, and then that way I know the threading is going in the right spot. Okay, and then let's go ahead and tighten these down. Okay, now we got the two in the middle. Put that in. Okay, and these I'm just gonna tighten right away. Okay, we're gonna now get the LCD LVDS connector reattached. Sometimes you have to like pull the connector back slightly. So I get that, line it up, pull it back, and click that in right and then you can see it kind of holds itself in place <clears throat> now that we got all of that we can actually go ahead and tighten down all the motherboard screws so we're gonna tighten this guy tighten this guy okay tighten this guy tighten this big one tighten this one and tighten this one all right, next we're gonna switch back over to the T3, Torx 3 screwdriver, and reconnect everything else. I think I did all the T5, Torx 5 screws. So we got this metal plate here. Again, there's a smaller like circular hole here, and then this one's elongated. The circular one goes towards the top. At least that's how this one came from factory. Okay, and I loosely fit that first. And then we'll get the second one, and we can use that to swing it around, align it, and tighten that down. All right. Okay. There we go. Next, we have the touchpad little cover as well. So does this do the same? Okay, on this one, the small circles to the right, and then the elongated ones to the left. Again, I don't know if it has to be that way, or if that's how it is on every single Mac, but that's how it is on this one. Okay, we're gonna start with that screw. And then we'll get the other one. And this allows you to kind of swing it a little. The reason why they make these little covers that way is so if there's any like misalignment or it's a little bit off, you can kind of slide it a little bit to one side. Okay, so there we go. Next we got the uh LCD LVDS connector one. So let's get that in. Okay. Oh, this one's being. Come on. Why not? There we go. Get the second one. those down all right then we'll get this connector get this in. okay click those two in good and then we'll get the metal plate again with the little piece sticking out going towards the top. All right. Slide that over, make sure it's lined up right. Get that in. Okay. Now we have this cable that we need to reattach. So this one, make sure that latches up. Slide this in. Okay, you want to make sure it's in all the way. You can actually see here. 
Okay, so you can actually see here when it's in all the way. So if I pull this out, okay, you can see the wings of this connector. You can see it goes almost completely flush. Then slide your finger over to latch it down. Okay, just like that. We're gonna go back over to here. And I'm gonna hold this side slightly up. We're gonna get this lined up. Click that in. Okay, you can actually feel it click. Then you can work your way by sliding the adhesive to stick it back down. Okay, just like that. All right, now we just need to put the metal plate on top here. We're almost done. Hopefully everything will work well after all of this, because if it doesn't, then that was a huge waste of time. <laughs> okay, loosely fit the screw. Okay, get this one, there we go. And the last one here. Okay, tighten that down, tighten this down, tighten this down. Good. All right, let's go ahead and reattach the battery connector. So we have the battery here. Okay, we've got this in. Okay. So this can be a little tricky to get in. You gotta make sure it goes in straight and there, okay? And then once you get that all, then you might have to help push this down slightly, the front edge, while you kind of push that in, okay? So just like this, and there we go. Then we'll put that little piece of adhesive back on. Let's go ahead and test it real quick. So, cut that. Okay. Got the bottom cover. Let me actually dust it a little bit. I'll be back. All right, so I'm back. All right, and I cleaned this off. Used some water and a little elbow grease. Actually, there's still a little bit here. Let me get a little more water and clean that up some more. Okay. So I just put water on a piece of paper towel and just wipe it off. You can see there's some of that. Can you see it there? Oh, there. Okay, you can see that there. So. You can see it just wipes off so some of it's kind of tough to get off that came off pretty easily but yeah all right so we just clean that all up we're gonna now pop the bottom cover off hopefully everything is reattached properly and hopefully it will just work all right click that back into place let's flip this over make sure that you don't forget to put in the screws that's something I always end up doing on the bottom after testing so I'm gonna have to remember this time. Plug it in, and right now, okay, touchpad's clicking, that's a good sign. Let's go ahead and see. Gotta wait for the screen to come up. I'm gonna do a command option PNR on boot, and hopefully it will do a PRAM reset. Some of these newer ones don't, and the Apple went away, so I think it worked. We'll wait for it to come up again, and we should be good to go. We just gotta screw everything back together and also test if the keyboard is registering uh, key presses because their old one, the keyboard wasn't working at all. Okay, so we'll wait, it should be turning itself back on again. Come on, touchpad still clicking. Come on, come on, there we go. There's the Apple logo. And now we gotta wait for it. Um, it might show the user account and stuff so let me hold this out of the way and then I'll be back just to show you the keyboards working and put the bottom screws on oh it still does the weird like laggy thing that's not good okay so here we have this and the keyboard does work now but I'm worried that like when it started up it did like a slow glitchy thing but the keyboard seems to be functioning well so I think we should be good I'm gonna shut it down we're going to close this and get the screws back in using the T5 Torx 5 screwdriver. And that should be it. Again, hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and really does help me continue to make these videos for a living. All right. And if can't help out that way again it would help a lot if you can watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on them I have a few subscribers that are really awesome and they kind of just watch all my videos and then um, like and comment on all of them it's really helpful and tells the algorithm that you really appreciate it even though you can't afford to like 
donate or contribute the other way. All right, so let's get all these screws back in. And we should be good to go. Oh, also, if you want a, another easy way to help out, um, I have another channel that does like um, my reviews are separate on that one. So if you want, if you're interested, let me know because I'm eventually going to stop putting my review videos on this channel. Um, and then they're all going to be on that specific channel. Um, so yeah, if you're curious or interested about that, let me know. I can send you a link. And yeah, all right. That's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Let's drop this. Bye.